It's the week of April 19th, 2022. My name is Alexis. And I'm Skylar. Welcome to your TNN. Today's first story is about a pink flamingo, but not just any pink flamingo. This bird, nicknamed Pink Floyd, escaped from a Kansas zoo all the way back in 2005. He has been on the run ever since. Back then, some of the caretakers were running behind schedule and getting the flamingo wings clipped. Pink Floyd and his friend number 347 decided to make a break. Number four, 347 flew north towards Michigan while Pink Floyd headed south towards Texas. He has since been seen in Wisconsin, Arkansas, Louisiana, and Texas on a numerous occasions. In 2006 and 2007, the escape even found a companion. Flamingos who probably arrived in the U.S. from Mexico during Hurricane Rena and Katrina. Well, last month, a Jackson County re resident named David Foreman noticed the elegant, long-laid bird while fishing near Port Lavaca on the Texas Gulf Coast on March 10, 2022. Foreman became aware of Pink Floyd dar daring star after posting the footage on social media. That's when people started telling me, "Oh, that's probably the escape, the escape flamingo." He said. The hunch was confirmed by the Texas Park and Wildlife officials. The exper ex experts said that though for Foreman could not see the flamingo's tag. They are confident it was Pink Floyd. Despite the frequent, frequent sights, the, the specific of Pink Floyd's journey on the west, south, central states remain a mystery. Also unclear, it is gender and age. While the zoo officials suspect Pink Floyd is a male in his 20s, Neither fact has been verified. The good news is that they have no plans of bringing the runaway flamingo back to Kansas. Just Jenica King, a spokesperson from the Seedwick County Zoo said, we decide very early on, once he flew down to Texas, that we would not make any efforts that could potentially harm him or harm the wildlife around him. The city of Buckeye is looking to make some major upgrades to the Buckeye City Airport. If you have ever been to the Buckeye Air Fair, you've seen it. The airport is located south of the I-10 freeway on the west side of Pedrite Road. The potential upgrades to the airport would include zoning for commercial development, like restaurants and hotels, as well as retail locations. The plan will also include building upgrades, new landscaping, as, along with new fencing and walls. Many people in the city feel like that as Buckeye in the West Valley continue to go, having an airport that is able to keep up with the demands will be important. The Buckeye City Council discussed and voted on an airport development project last week. We will keep you updated in the future about any possible changes to the area. Now let's go over to Ms. Jigavelli with the weekly update. Okay. Good morning, Chartesso students and staff. Welcome to another great week. It is the week of April 19th through the 22nd. Today, we will have TNN and coding with Mr. Whistler. Tomorrow on Wednesday, April 20th, we will continue our state testing for grades three through five. We will have ELA testing on Wednesday and math testing on Thursday. Parents, please make sure that your children are here on time. If there are appointments scheduled, please reschedule those. On Wednesday, we also have a governing board meeting at 6 p.m. And 
On Thursday, teachers, we do have a 301 performance pay committee meeting and all staff are welcome to attend. On Friday, we will have uh, makeup testing for students that have been absent, a kindergarten field trip to the Children's Museum, and first grade will be going to the park for Earth Day. We have a leadership meeting after school for our grade level leaders at 315 in the library, and we have our Peter Piper Pizza fundraiser event from 4 to 7 p.m at the Peter Piper Pizza in Buckeye on Watson. We will receive 15% of the proceeds, so we hope that all families can attend. There will be a pizza party for the class that has the highest percentage of students in attendance. Please, let's keep our behavior exemplary. Parents, we will be sending progress reports home on Wednesday, so please make sure that you are looking at those and signing them and returning them so you are up to date on your child's grades. Let's have a great week. Thank you, Ms. Jacobelli. Here's Ms. Williams' with Counseling Corner. Hey, everyone. It's a message from your counselor, from Mrs. Williams from the Counseling Corner. So this week I kind of wanted to focus a little bit on our testing. Um, I want us to kind of use some of those strategies that I've been talking with all of the schools about breathing and when you're feeling some test anxiety, just keep working through it. Have perseverance and perseverance means where you just keep going no matter what. And so I kind of want to just talk a little bit about that. I really want you guys to do your absolute best. Testing is important. It's a way for you to show your new teachers what you've learned this year. It's a way to show respect to your current teacher that came in every day and did fantastic things with you. Just remember on Mondays when you're off, your teachers are still working. So we want to show them all that, that we've learned. We want to show them respect. And we want to just show them that we got this. And so that way next year, when you go into your brand new school year, your teachers will see how amazing you are. Remember when you put your name down on your test that your name means greatness. And so we want to show them greatness through our testing. So you guys go out there, rock those tests, do your absolute best, get some sleep, make sure you have a good lunch and breakfast. Make sure you have your waters ready to go because it's getting a little warm. And let's just do amazing things and let's be great. All right, you guys, have a great rest of your day. Bye. Hey, Miss William, let's go over to Austin and Izzy for sports. Hey, sports, my name is Izzy. And I'm Austin. The Diamondbacks started their season with a dramatic walk-off three on Homer. The D-backs beat the Padres in the first game of the new season by a final score of four to two. They then lost the next three games of the series and are currently 1-3, sitting in last place in the NL West. The Arizona Coyotes only have a few games left in this season. While they're not going to be making the playoffs this year, things are starting to look up until one of the team's top scorers, Clayton Fikeller, fell weirdly to, into the boards a couple of weeks ago and broke his femur. He will be out until at least this, the summertime when he can return to getting ready for the new season. The Suns have finished their regular season and playoffs just started. This was a huge year for the Suns, setting franchise records with 64 wins, 47-0, and when leading after three, an 18-game win streak. It will be very exciting to see how they do in the coming weeks. This is all for today. See you next time on Sports News. Thanks, guys. Here's Chris and Alejandro with Entertainment News. Welcome back to the Tamer News. I'm Alejandra. And I'm Christopher. This summer is shaping up to be a big one for the movies. It is always nice on a hot Arizona day to go into a cool movie theater, lay back, and see a new movie. Well, here are a few movies coming out between now and summer that you might be interested in. First up, around the world in 80 days, a young marmoset and frog take off on a surprise-filled adventure around the world. This... This one will be in the theaters on May 6th, then on June 17th, the movie Lightyear hits theaters. This this is the backstory of Buzz Lightyear from the Toy Story movies. This movie will not be featured Team Allen's voice as Buzz Lightyear, but instead Chris Evans, 
Then on July 1st, Minions, the Rise of the Group premieres. This is a story of a young Gru and how he developed into a super, to a super villain as he wanted to be. See you next time on Entertainment News. Great job, guys. Let's go over to McKenna with Joke of the Week. Hello, and welcome to Joke of the Week. My name is McKenna, and I will be telling you a joke. What do you call a fish with no eyes? A uh, If you have a joke and would like to tell it on the news, please go to smusd.me slash news, and we would love to have you on. See you next time on Joke of the Week. Thanks, McKenna. Bye. Here's Mika and Mateo with Fun Factoria. <laughs> Welcome to Fun Fact Trivia. My name is Mika. And I'm Mateo. Did you know that today, April 19th, is National Hanging Out Day? We aren't talking about spending time with your friends or family. This day encourages communities to learn about the benefits, both financially and environmentally, of using a clothesline for drying laundry. According to the Project Laundry List website, clothes dryers are... Close dryers account for an astonishing 6-10% of residential energy consumption. Your question today is when was the first electric clothes dryer invented? A. 1925 B. 1937 Or C. 1945 You have 10 seconds to make your decision. If you said B, 1937, you are correct. Henry W. Altofer invented what is likely the first electric clothes dryer in 1937, but J. Ross Moore, an inventor from North Dakota, developed designs for automatic clothes dryers running in the early 20th century. His design was electrically operated dryer was developed and released to the public in 1938. Fun fact. Fun fact. Industrial designer Brooke Stevens developed the first electric dryer with a glass window a few, la a few years later in the 1940s. See you next time in Fun Fact. Thanks guys. Let's go over to Brie and Halen with This Week in History. <laughs> Hello and welcome to This Week in History. I am Halen. My name's Bree. On April 19th, 1897, John J. McDermott of New York won the first Boston Marathon with a time of 2 hours, 55 minutes, and 10 seconds. The Boston Marathon was the idea of Boston Athletic Association member and inaugural U.S. Olympic team manager John Graham, who was inspired by the marathon at the first modern Olympic Games in Athens in 1896. With the assistance of Boston businessman Herbert H. Holton, various routes were consider considered before a measured distance of 24.5 miles from the Irvington Oval in Boston to Metcalfe's Mill in Ashland was eventually selected. 15 runners started the race, but only 10 made it to the finish line. Although he walked several times during the final miles, McDermott still won by a comfortable six minute 52 seconds mcdermott had won only other marathon on u.s soil in the previous october in new york the marathon distance was changed in 1908 to, to, in accordance with olympic standards to its current length of 26 mild miles 385 yards the Boston Marathon was originally held on Patriots Day, April 19th, a regional holiday that commemorates the beginning of the Revolutionary War. In years when, he, when the 19th fell on the Sunday, the race was held the following Monday. In 1969, Patriots Day was officially moved to, to the third Monday in April, and the race has been held on that day Monday ever since. See you next week on This Week in History. Thanks guys, here's Gabriel and Kendall with Science Time. 
Welcome to Science Time. My name is Gabriel. And I am Kendall. In 2020, Stan, one of the world's largest and most complete T-Rex skeletons, was auctioned for a reward of reward $27.5 million. The precious fossil was bought by an anonymous private buyer and led many paleontologists to worry that the T-Rex was lost to science forever. As it turns out, they had nothing to worry about. On March 23rd, 2022, the official of Abu Dhabi, the capital of the United Arab Emirates, revealed that the 39-foot-long T-Rex will be a star attraction in their Natural History Muse- Museum, scheduled to open in 2025. Now that Stan has a new home at the Natural History Museum, Abu Dhabi, this 67 million year old dinosaur will be in the care of expert scientists and will continue to contribute to education and research and inspire future explorers. The Abu Dhabi Department of Culture and Tourism said in a news release. See you next week with more Science Time. Thanks guys, let's go over to Gammon with Word of the Week. Welcome to Word of the Week. My name is Gannon. This week's word is convoluted. Convoluted is an adjective and it means very complicated and difficult to understand. Here's how you can use it in a sentence. Our textbook has a detailed drawing of a convoluted surface of the brain. See you next time on Word of the Week. Thank you, Gannon. That is all for this episode of TNN. See you next week.